Carla Qualtrough is Canada's Minister of Employment, Workforce Development and Disability Inclusion, and she joins me now. Minister Qualtrough, good to see you again. Thanks for taking time to speak with me. Well, thanks for having me. Uh, explain who's eligible for this latest suite of government COVID supports and under what circumstances. Okay, so there's a new suite of business supports that are more targeted than, in fact, all of these measures are, are, are much more targeted. We're, we've moved away, we've pivoted, as the Deputy Prime Minister has said, from the broad-based approach where every business is eligible, every worker is eligible, to really reflect the economic and public health realities of today, um, but making sure we still support workers. So we're extending the Canada Recovery Sickness Benefit and Caregiver Benefit. So any worker that can't work because they're sick or isolating with COVID, they can't work because they have caregiving responsibilities, those benefits all will continue. And we've added two weeks to each um, through next May. Mm. For workers who are otherwise kind of implicated by COVID, the, the main the main thing that's happening to workers and jobs right now that's on a negative, because as you know, we've recovered more than the number of jobs that we lost during COVID is the potential for lockdowns. So where we see businesses being impacted and workers potentially losing their jobs is in a lockdown situation. So that's why this targeted Canadian worker lockdown benefit is being put in place so that if anybody can't work or isn't working or has lost hours because of COVID and, and it's due to an imposed lockdown, they have access to the same level of benefit they had under the Canada Recovery Benefit. All right. To be clear, this is not available to someone who uh, might not uh, be working, who might be out of work because they've refused to get vaccinated. Uh, that might be a condition of their employment. Uh, is that correct? Not, and, not at and all. Why not? In fact, even if you're in a lockdown, well, it's it's the same you know, the same logic that we need to have our workplaces um, safe, and we need people not going to work sick, and we need it's you know the economic and public health imperative of, of keeping people safe and keeping businesses open. And just the, 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 the requirement um, that businesses are imposing of a vaccine mandate, we wanna support that. Mm. Uh, the Canadian Federation of Independent Business, I'm sure you know, has, has been pressing your government to change the threshold for these aid programs from the 40 to 50% minimum revenue loss requirement yeah. to just 10%. Uh, why have you settled on the 40 to 50%? Well, again, that's a that's a finance question, Peter, but I'll do my best to answer. My understanding is we wanted to help businesses that have been significantly um, impacted over uh, over a period of time. Now, we know, for example, the tourism and hospitality um, support is really targeted because we know these this sector, these sectors or businesses in this 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 definition um, aren't aren't recovering as quickly as other sectors, and we want to focus on them. And then the the broader kind of hardest hit business requirement is really for businesses that have had uh, an endearing, right. you know, economic impact. Okay. I mean, you, you've talked about these, these are more targeted and uh, yeah. uh, the government I know is hoping. Except that in the situation of a lockdown. Right. So okay. well, any and, business, you know, in a lockdown or any worker in a lockdown has access to these. Okay. So that's where I'm headed. How, how do you verify right. that someone's in a lockdown? People will be making applications for these, uh, presumably from different parts of the country. How do you how do you know who is eligible yeah. and legitimately qualified to get the payments? Well, we spent a lot of time figuring that out. And where we landed in the legislation is um, it, it's definitely um, at the discretion of the local, regional, provincial health authority or whatever a system is within a province to declare a lockdown. And we have provided a definition in, in the legislation that we will then compare the parameters of that declaration against in order to decide, and it's through government council on, on my recommendation, that that definition has been met. Um, Non-essential services have been impacted. Uh, it, it's a significant, sorry, I don't have the exact legal verbiage, so I don't want to get it wrong, but um, the Public Health Agency of Canada and public health agencies across the country have a very kind of consistent and well-understood on definition of lockdown and we tried to mirror that as much as possible in the legislation defined by region more than 14 days we tried to do our very best to, to, to okay. mirror existing understandings that, that are out there your government is sending a signal that this is the final support measure you'll you'll have to offer what if there's a bad fifth wave in cases spike and we get more lockdowns uh and maybe not even uh you know, I, I suppose lockdown is the measure for this benefit, but what if we get a really bad fourth wave and people aren't going to work again? Well, then, like like every other time, we, absolutely, we hope and we expect this to be the last one, but like every, we pivot again, Peter, and we look at it again. There's no, you know, people can absolutely be assured that if something hits us that we don't 
know is coming, then we will we will absolutely go back to the table and make sure workers are are supported. It, there's no doubt in my mind that that is the the, the collective um, understanding of cabinet on this. Okay, let me let me ask about artists and performers. Uh, they've been hard hit and continue to be. Uh, this plan doesn't include them. Uh, why are they not included or eligible? Well, this particular legislation doesn't include a specific subset of workers, like you're talking about artists and, and people in the cultural industries. Um, but Minister Rodriguez is working with um, stakeholders in that sector to figure out a way to directly support you know, impacted artists and workers in the culture section. Um, again, if, they, if they're in a lockdown, they would be, but a small comfort. I appreciate that as I say it. But um, there is going to be a solution where we make good on our promise to support these workers. Um, again, I, I don't know how technical you want me to be, yeah. but it's it's actually difficult to find a list. And how do we define it? And who would the people be? And how do we pay them? And what what mechanism is it? Is it a tax credit? Is it CRA? Is it ESCC and Service Canada? So, but you're I mean, saying that's happening. I mean, someone's trying absolutely. to absolutely all it out. those conversations are, are happening. All for right, sure. there, and there's the other. Let, let's talk about seniors. I know you're you're dealing with this issue yeah. as well. Uh, so, here's the situation, right? And uh, all kinds of seniors are seeing their guaranteed income supplement being clawed back, or they're not getting it at all because of the pandemic payments they received. Uh, where their income went higher and, and then in some yeah. cases disqualify them. So uh, what are you doing about that? What should they expect? Should they expect that, look, uh, yeah, the, the pandemic supports were taken as income. And if you took that as income, then you've taken yourself out of the eligibility for a certain level of GIS payments. So what should they expect? Um, well, uh, thank you for defining it so fairly, because that's exactly the, the, the complexity that we're dealing with here is that there will be seniors whose 2020 income meant that their GIS payments were either reduced or, or, or lost. Um, and some of those seniors, that happened because they collected CERB. But there's other seniors who worked more last year and got took on extra hours during the pandemic. And so they lose uh, or have their GIS reduced. And so it's for me, it's an equity issue. We're trying to figure out some seniors tapped into their RSPs last year. Mm -hmm. And, and that was treated as income. And as a result, they have reduced GIS. So you can imagine a scenario where somebody worked and earned $10,000 um, and somebody took CERB for $10,000 and they're treated differently in terms of their eligibility for GIS this year. Right. We're working through it. It's very complicated. There's an equity piece here. Um, there's been no final decision. I'm not in any way saying that we're not going to find a, 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 a solution. But it, in my mind, it has to be equitable for any senior okay. Uh, and, and seniors have so, to be treated the same. All right, so this is a, a stay tuned. So uh, seniors yeah, it's were a live issue. worried about this or some um, moving, and I'm moving about parts. It. I feel and, very uh, badly for people, yeah. Right. yeah. Okay, uh, Carla Qualtro, always good to talk to you. Thanks for your time tonight. My pleasure, Peter. Take care.